let's get set up for CIS 152 uh, data structures and the first thing to do is put the uh, CD in the uh, optical drive and use my computer to explore and find the contents of the CD. Here you can see the contents displayed and what I recommend that you do is go to edit select all then edit copy and let's copy this to a location so we have a backup of what's on the CD. This will help you out in case there uh, something were to happen to the CD and uh, it'll be a lot more convenient to have it in a uh, permanent location like the hard drive. So I'll locate my C drive here. I'll file new folder and I'm going to say CIS 152 CD. Open that folder up, go to edit and paste, and we'll let it paste the contents of that folder to the um, uh, C drive and uh, it'll be in a convenient location where I can get to it. Okay, we've uh, completed our um, uh, copying of the contents of the CD over to our hard drive now. And uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to get set up uh, so that we can edit and compile uh, Java code and we can look at the source code. And so the first thing I want you to do is open up the JDK6 uh, folder. And in that folder um, you'll see a README document uh, from Sun Microsystems tell you a little bit about the Java platform and how it works. Uh, you can take that and open that up and uh, read that. I recommend that you spend a little time doing that if you've not done that before. And the next thing that we want to do is uh, double click on the uh, JD6 um, install and go ahead and do an install of the JDK6. It's important that you install the JDK6 so that later when we uh, install our integrated development environment, uh, the integrated development environment will find the proper JDK and be able to communicate with it. Once you've got that installed, then we'll move on to the next step. After you've finished installing your JDK, we'll go back to the uh, CD files and let's go to the additional IDE folder. Open that up and you'll see that there are choices of several different integrated development environments uh, that you can use. I don't really care which uh, integrated development environment you use. However, any examples that I use uh, or show you in videos will uh, use JGRASP. Um, it's simple to use, easy to install, and easy to work with. Uh, so that is the uh, integrated de development environment that I recommend that you use. So we'll open up the JGRASP folder. And there's a simple executable there and you'll just simply double click on that and follow the directions to do an install of JGRASP.
Okay, after you have completed the install of JGRASP, we need to confirm that it's uh, working okay. So JGRASP should have put an icon on your desktop for JGRASP. Double click on that. And be patient, it takes a little while for JGRASP to open uh, when you first use it. And um, here I have JGRASP open now. And uh, here I can see my C drive here. And if you remember, in the CD there were, was some source code. So we're going to use that source code to help us verify that JGRASP is working OK. So I'll browse for my C drive, scroll down, and find the CIS152 CD folder that we created find the source code folder and let's use the jap chapter 1 files and we'll use the first one the first version of lincoln.java from chapter 1 open that up this is just a simple system out print line program that uh, prints a quote from Abraham Lincoln and we can see the header comments up here um, I will expect you to add name, date, name of the file, and a description of what the program does, and that will be expected on all source code that you turn in. I will also expect you to add comments in your code explaining uh, what the code does. Um, being able to explain what your code does is an important part of this course. So we have some source code and uh, let's uh, compile the code because it's not compiled. All we have is the source code over here. So we'll use the compile button to do that. And it takes a moment for it to compile. We get a operation complete message at the bottom. And notice over here in the uh, Explorer window we can see that uh, .class file has shown up and that's the bytecode. If you open up that uh, class file um, it looks like a bunch of garbage because um, that is close to machine language. That is the bytecode that uh, the Java uh, runtime environment uses to uh, uh, interpret the code into machine language. We'll close that. And now let's run the program. This is just a simple console output uh, application. And when we run that, we can see down in the console at the bottom here that the quote, a quote by Abraham Lincoln, whatever you are, be a good one, shows up. And so our code is, is uh, working correctly.